Let's talk low carb, right? That's something that people talk about all the time. There's been so many different metamorphoses of a low carb diet. There's been Atkins, keto, paleo, you know, all of these things that are low carb. And a lot of people feel like, well, that's what you're just supposed to do, right? It doesn't matter what my goals are. Like everybody says you should do low carb. So don't eat bread, don't eat pasta, all of these things. And this fear around carbs has come up. But that can be a problem because carbs are our body's best source of energy. And eating bread or eating pasta isn't going to make you gain a bunch of weight. If anything, it's gonna fuel your body a little bit better. But what I really wanna talk about today is how going low carb might impact your metabolism. So I'm gonna share with you a case study of an individual who wasn't eating super low calories, she was kind of in the middle, but she was doing really, really low carb and how that impacted her metabolic rate and protein substrate utilization. So here's someone who's five foot five and when she first came in to see us was 130 pounds. Now she thought she needed to lose weight because I'm not even gonna get into that whole thing, but you know, because of the ham we equation that if you're five foot five and then you add five pounds for every inch over a hundred, blah, blah, you know, she thought she had to be 125 pounds. So it was a whole thing. And as a result, she went low carb, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do and carbs are bad. So she went low carb and this is what happened to her metabolic rate. So remember, 1622 is where we would predict her resting metabolic rate to be for someone her similar age and height, but her resting metabolic rate was 1241. It had come down quite a bit. So it's, you know, about 400 calories lower than we would predict it to be, meaning the body's compensating for being under fueled. Now, in terms of her total calorie intake, she was eating about 1500 calories a day. She was pretty active, exercising four or five times a week. So we can definitely make the argument argument that there's, this is in combination with her not eating enough. However, it's not like this person was eating 1,900 calories a day like many of the case studies that I've shown you. She was eating 1,500, sometimes a little bit more than that, but the big thing is she was doing really low carb. This person hadn't had grains or bread or pasta or anything like that in months, if not longer, before coming to see me. Her intake was primarily protein, veggies, fat, and that's it. And as a result, her metabolism adapted. Now, what we're also seeing, remember, is this protein substrate is 7% above normal, meaning her body's breaking down too much of her muscle mass. And what I think that is, is because during her exercise, she didn't have enough carbohydrates to fuel it, right? So when you're exercising, your body's sort of working between using carbohydrates and fat as its source of fuel based on the energy that it needs for whatever you're doing, whether or not that's endurance or strength or whatever it might be, right? Without the carbs, your body starts to chip into other things and that's muscle, which <laughs> defeats the purpose, right? If you're trying to exercise and hopefully build some muscle or lean mass. So again, low carb individual eating about 1500 calories a day, sometimes a little bit more, her metabolic rate adapted and her protein substrate was too high, meaning her body's breaking down too much muscle. So what did we do? So what did we do? You guessed it, we had her take in more carbohydrates, right? So what we did, for example, is have her add some toast in the morning with the eggs that she was eating, or sometimes she would do like yogurt or whatever, but just yogurt with some berries, we had her add some granola and little things like that. I'm not talking we told her to just go eat seven bowls of pasta every day. It was just a matter of adding more carbohydrates to her diet. So bread or granola or something like that in the morning. At lunch, oftentimes she was doing a salad with just protein, so we had her add some carbs to that. We said add quinoa or beans or a few other things to get more carbs at lunch, and then same thing at dinner. Now, as a result, of course, that pulled her calories up a little bit, so her total calorie intake did come up to about 18, 1900 calories a day with a lot more carbohydrates, and let's see how her metabolism improved after doing that for about seven months. So things look significantly better. We honestly still have a little bit of work to do, but so much better. So you can see here her resting metabolic rate came all the way up to 1588, so really close to where we predict it to be. We might be able to get it a little bit higher, maybe up to that 1622 or a little bit above, but 
all in all, this looks so much better. And then protein metabolism, similarly, it's so much better. It's only 1.5% above normal now. Ideally, we would get it within normal, of course, but so much better from taking in more carbohydrates. And yes, a little bit more calories, but the carbs were the thing that really helped her with her energy. What I didn't touch on earlier is that she was noticing that her energy during workouts would deplete pretty quickly. And by adding in more carbohydrates, she had such better energy and was better at her workouts as well. So just because it's out there saying, oh, you got to do low carbs and bread is bad and never eat pasta and all of these sort of crazy things out there. Remember that everybody's body is unique and carbs are our body's best source of fuel. There's no reason we need to vilify them. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're so glad that you're here.